Hey man, James here. How are you today? Today I get to be here with a good mate of mine. He's actually my personal trainer, but we've known each other now for over 12, 13 years. I'm pretty sure something like that. Yeah. Um, we used to do martial arts together. He, uh, his name's Jack Davy. Jack is an incredible man. He's a personal trainer, as I said before, but he's more than that. He's also competes in the strongman um, uh, competitions. Now, if you understand what those strongman things are, they carry crazy amounts of weight. Uh, they have uh, muscles on their muscles, muscles in areas that didn't think you should have muscles. They're, um, they, you know, they look at 200 kilos, which is over 400 pounds, and think, oh, that's pretty light. Um, that's my warm up. Uh, these guys, they, they, are, they epitomize strength. And Jack and I were talking in my uh, training this over the last few weeks. They're saying I'm starting a podcast and I want men to understand uh, some uh, simple reasons why they need to get into exercise with the importance of it. And I don't think, I'm not sure we can give them some pointers on what to do on a podcast, you know, Jack, but I, I think what we can do is is the take in the right direction. So why don't you share a little bit about your story first so the fellas know who you are, a um, sure. bit of your background, um, and why you decided to get into Strongman. Sure. So um, I've been lifting weights now, I think, for about 13, 14 years. Um, and it was always something I really, really enjoyed. I'd been doing it for a long, long time. And once upon a, once upon a time, I went with a friend to Lismore, um, and there just happened to be a strongman competition on there. And it was Australia's strongest man. And I saw all these guys, they were pulling a truck in the main street and they went and did stone lifting and all these other things. And I thought, man, that's cool. Like I've been going to the gym for a long time, but these guys are seriously strong. That's the kind of thing I want to be doing. And uh, I ordered some equipment and got started and never really looked back since then. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's so did the you do a lot of, Yeah, sorry. Did you do a lot of research into that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So when I first started, it was a very small sort of niche sport and it was hard to find information on. So you've got to really do some digging. You know, you get old historic strength books and stuff like that. There was a lot of reading involved. Uh, you had to go and basically train with the, the right people. I found a strongman group up in the Gold Coast and I went up there and I had to train with the guys. They pointed me in the direction of the fabricator that they used for their equipment. He made me some stuff. I came up a few weeks later, got it sorted. Yeah, that's sort of the way you get into it. It wasn't so easy as it is now where you can just Google uh, strongman and you find a gym within like an hour of you. There was a process to go through to sort of get started. So you had to kind of really be interested in it, I think. Yeah. It's funny how, how uh, the internet, and it's, 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 we forget that the internet really is relatively new in yeah. the phase that we see it, in the dimension that we see it today, you know, 12 years ago compared to today and then yeah. 12 years before that, it almost didn't exist. So um, I know exactly where you're coming from. And I think, so, I think sometimes we think that the internet's always been there. I know my kids, for my kids, it's always been there, but mm. for, for, for what we do, it hasn't. Uh, so let's talk about that for a second. Um, it sounds like, okay, you wanted to do something because you saw it was pretty cool, but it wasn't the easiest thing to be able to do, even though you thought it was cool. Like, there was a struggle involved. Is that right? Mm. Oh, it still is. You know, that's the, it's the whole point of it really is overcoming struggle. That's the fun of it because these things that we do, they're not easy. And that's why it feels good when you get it done. You know, it's like, uh, for a lot of us, there's things we do every day that we don't think are a big deal because they're things we do every day. They're easy. This is the opposite of that. It's all about struggling in order to attain. And I think that struggle is the best part. You know, that's, that's what drew me, drew me to it because it was hard. It's not something anyone could do. And, you know, you want to be one of those people that can do this thing that others can't. So, yeah, that, that's what drew, it, drew me to it because it's, it's challenging. That's really interesting, isn't it? Let's just stay here for a moment. So we're just talking about lifting heavy things, really. That's what we're talking about here. Um, and I know when I turn up to train with you, I, have, I, I do my best to change my, oh, heck, I don't want to do this today, to a, yes, let's get this done, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and how much of that have you found goes over into every aspect of life 
I think uh, I think the longer you do it, the more it crosses over. You know, when I first started this lifting stuff, it sort of just applied to lifting because I just liked it. And then the longer you do it, uh, the more you run into parts of what you do that you don't necessarily enjoy that you have to do anyway. And so what I, I guess I generally, the longer I trained, the more things I didn't like doing that I had to do to get better at it. And the better I got at being disciplined in every aspect of my life, because now it's necessary in the thing that I was passionate about, I developed the skill. Yeah, it becomes a habit, doesn't it? The habit yeah. of saying, well, look, you know, I don't really want to turn up the training. I don't want to go and lift that weight, especially in the middle of winter. Um, and then your mind plays the tricks, the tricks of, well, if you lift it wrong, you're going to tear a muscle. If you yeah. lift it wrong, you're going to injure yourself. And so your mind goes to the negative rather than to the positive. And so we talk ourselves out of, of everything. So, um, so it, it, let's get into that. I mean, so many men, they may want to go and lift weights. So they might want to go and start martial arts. They might want to go and do strong men. Like, cause let's face it. Bodybuilding is different to strong men. Um, and you train in all aspects of, of weights and all that stuff, uh, and exercise. Um, but what I've found is the why is more important than the what. You know, I got to interview a man called Al Bala. Uh, if, if you haven't listened to that, everyone, make sure you listen to the, to the podcast by Al Bala. It'll be up shortly. Um, and we talk a little bit about the why versus the what. Um, how, how, talk about that. Why should men be thinking about lifting things? So, I, yeah, so... In terms of why should you lift something, why should you have that in your life? I mean, I think first of all, you've got to cover your bases, right? If you want to be able to function ideally under pressure or in your everyday life in whatever your job or you know, occupation demands, you need to be healthy. And if you're not strong, you're not going to be able to hold on to your health forever. There's a lot of studies out there that correlate strength with aging you know the stronger that you are for longer in life the more functional you'll be uh it's the sort of thing that you need to perform everything in your life so i think if you don't practice some form of strength or resistance training in your life you are setting yourself up for health trouble later on so i think from an essentials point of view it needs to be done for that reason but i also think that other reasons to engage in strength training is because it can help give you a sort of a really good feeling physically of overcoming you know we might all have this mental thing where we get a victory at work or we win in some other aspects but I think what a lot of people are lacking these days is that feeling of physical overcoming and while these mental victories and these work victories are great we're not programmed for them we didn't particularly evolve for them the first thing we evolved for was fighting for survival and we still have all these reward systems in our brain for when we achieve something physically, from endorphins to you know dopamine, things like that. You get this positive kick and you feel really good when you achieve things physically. And that's not something you can fully replicate with just you know workplace victories and non-physical stuff. If you don't have that in your life, you are missing out on a large part of what it's like to be human, I think. And it's the sort of feeling that makes everything else in your life function better. It is, you know. Let's 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 face it. I mean, um, all all of those things play an important role. I mean, we all want that accolade from our loved one. You know, that say job well done. We all want the boss's praise. We all want if you own your own company, you all we all want yeah. our numbers to go up and our profits to increase. Um, but when it comes, yeah, that's the, uh, the, just the lighting in the background. That's the tough part, man. So it's yeah. the, you know, we all want that. And, um, but there is something, but that's all to do with our mental and emotional. There's something that happens in the physical that can only come from exercise. Yeah. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, are you seeing, like, are you seeing an increase of people wanting to exercise today or a decrease? What are you what are you seeing? I think I'm seeing just as many people keen for exercise as I ever have, but when they're coming in, they're less excited about it. It's less of oh. Yeah, so there's just as many people coming in because I think a lot of people realise that it's essential that they really should do it to optimize their health. But less of them are excited to do stuff. They don't have that attitude of, yeah, let's get in and get it done because it's gonna create a good thing. They have this attitude of, oh, this is hard and I'm just doing it because I feel like I should. Wow. Man, that is 
so profound right in there. So we're seeing a cultural shift of like, okay, everyone's telling me I should exercise, but because they're telling me I should exercise, we've lost the enjoyment of exercise. Yeah, it's, it's very sense? much, yeah, it's very much this task to tick off the list. And when they first come in, they're always like that. But what I find is once someone builds some momentum up, they're into it by a few months. It's not the case anymore. But very much when people first start, I think because a lot of people now don't have much of a connection to exercise, they might not have done much of it throughout their life. They don't know that it should feel good and that it will end up feeling good. So they just don't have the experience. They never played sports. They've never really done much. Uh, So, yeah, they don't know what to really expect. And that's more and more common. People come to me and they're in their mid-30s and they've never, never done any form of training at all or sports or anything. That's pretty common. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so, man, if you're listening, so any, as you're listening to this, um, and if you have never, if you've always been the um, non athletic person and you don't know where to start, start somewhere. Um, if you're the, uh, you were athletic younger or years ago and you stopped being athletic. Um, and now you found, like, so you found a reason to stop. Like Jack, how many people have come to you? Like me personally, you know, I, 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 I'm a martial artist. I'm a professional martial artist. I'm in my martial arts studio. You know, my limitations with my knee, the guys are men. I've got a, not a, a knee that doesn't like me too much. Sometimes it gets angry, but how, you know, so many people want to come and find an excuse why they shouldn't train. Is there a way? Okay. Let's say that. Have you found that there really is that there really people that can't exercise, or is there always a way? There's always a way. There's always something. Most people don't look for it because what they're really looking for is a reason they don't have to worry about training. But if you look for a way that you can get it done, no matter what, there's always a way. No matter what injury you've got going, it's super, super uncommon. I've never had it happen, and I've been doing this job for like ten years. I've never had it happen that someone just can't exercise ever. There's always some stuff that we can do. And there's always a way you can improve. What I always say to people with limitations is focus on what you can do while doing a little bit to fix up what you can't do. And just go all in on that. If you find something you can do, just get really damn good at it. doesn't matter what it is. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So let's talk about that then. What, what, what can a person, where does a person start? Do they start with, I know I need to, you know, is there a way to start? What, what should a person be doing there? Let's say they may not have the money to go and get a personal trainer. Uh, yep. what, what, where do they start? What do they do? The simplest place to start is just moving around. It doesn't have to be any sort of moving. You know, there's this base level of activity that you can do. If you've started at nothing, anything will get you results. So you could just be walking. You know, one I really, really like if people are able to do it is after every major meal that you have, you go for a 10 minute walk. And for most people, that's pretty doable. You know, they might go for a 10 minute walk before breakfast. You know, they've got their lunch break at work. They eat, then they go for a 10 minute walk. Then they finish work. They might have a snack, go for a 10 minute walk. Like you're getting like two to four 10 minute walks a day. You know, if you're doing that, that's a good base of movement. And then once you start doing Mm -hmm. that, you'll start feeling better and then you'll start getting excited for it. And then your excitement will probably lead you to choosing some form of exercise beyond that. You know, you'll sort of be led where you want to go based off the fact that you're like, oh, I feel good. This is making me feel good. I want to do more of it. What should I do? And you'll find something, you'll try it, whether you like it or not, it doesn't really matter because if you don't like it, you'll find something else and you'll keep moving and the good feelings will keep coming. How important is it for, okay, so let's just let's step back a step. You know, um, let's talk about the hormonal responses for men. You know, I'm hearing it so often. You know, we, we're hearing about the, the, the wording, the black dog, uh, which is men's suicide. It's a, uh, you know, I, it's, pre- it's a pretty big topic. We're not obviously not going to say that we have the answer to that. We don't. Um, it's sad. But is an expert in the industry of exercise and in strong men and dealing with men and obviously a lot of women as well. How important, what are the changes that you've seen for a mental state and an emotional state when they start to exercise? You know, if the person's in sad, they're in depression, does exercise play an important role? I think, uh, I think it plays a massive role. You know, it, it starts at a small thing in that when they train, 
they get sort of that uh, endorphin response and they feel good in that moment. And for people who don't feel good very often, that's the first step, right? This thing makes me feel good. And so while they're actually doing it, they feel good. And the deeper they're going to exercise, the more they start to develop goals around them, whether they're strength goals, like in the case of myself or something else, you develop these goals. And as you tick these goals off the list and achieve them, because achieving them is no big deal because when you train, you feel good. So you train all the time, right? And so then you start ticking off yes. these goals and that starts bringing you out of it. And it's sort of this, uh, this upward spiral, you know, just one thing leads to another. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of, you know, in terms of like the hormonal response to exercise and things like that, it's been uh, yeah, proven time and time again, that regular exercise for men increases testosterone levels and testosterone levels are associated with feeling good all the time and low testosterone levels are associated with not feeling so good at all. So there's a positive correlation there. And that's without even going into the psychology of goal setting and how being goal focused and process driven like that can raise testosterone levels and how being competitive can raise testosterone levels. And even if you're only competitive with yourself, all that stuff makes you feel better. You know, it's sort of like it just all comes together and it's a good combination. So let's, let's go there for a second about, um, you know, one thing builds upon another is what you said, which is about the, you know, you, you're a person who's, so a lot of men, they're in their, their closet, um, in the, in the closet when it comes to the, their emotions, the way they feel, they're sad or depressed. And, and, and you know what, I, I kind of feel that we're using the word depressed in too broad of a sense today. I think that it, most of the time, okay, we're just having a bad time. We're just trying to figure out how the heck to get out of it. And the doctor wants to give some kind of antidepressant you know, um, which I don't think they need, but like what you just said is that they, they start doing something that they enjoy. They, it's like they start exercise, they go, I feel good about that. And then they want to do it again. And then someone says, Oh, now you've become, you're addicted to exercise. And the issue with that is, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. there is no issue with, with being, yeah. being, deciding you want to stay fit and healthy. But what I love what you just said is that when you start, you, you actually all of a sudden have one joyful thing in your life, which then can build onto another. Yeah. And if you've got hard stuff going on in every other area of your life, it can be a joyful thing that's completely separate from all the other stuff. So some things might have been joyful, but because they're tied up in something now that isn't, it's another aspect of your life. It might bring it all down, but this thing can stay separate from all of that. Yeah. Because yeah. I know like in my dojang, if I, if, when a person's having a bad day, if, if the, the rule is that as soon as you step on the mats, you have to be on the mats and that includes your mind. Your mind yeah. must come with you or you're going to get hurt. Do you find the same when it comes to strength training and weight training is that um, it allows a person's mind to be fully present because there's no way they're going to lift the weight if it's not. Yeah, that's exactly what I find. Especially when, you know, you're going towards stuff like if you had specific strength goals and you were lifting some pretty heavy stuff, 100%. There's no way that you're going to make, you know, 200 kilos move off the floor if you're thinking about how you've got to cook dinner later or anything else or, you know, your work situation. You have to be thinking about what you're doing or it just won't happen. All of your focus has to be driven towards that thing you're doing right then or it just doesn't work. And that's another reason why I love this stuff is because it forces you to be that way because otherwise things won't work. And so you, you become that focused and everything else for a second doesn't quite matter so much. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, okay, let's, let's get back on and now let's talk about a testosterone thing for men. It's all over the place right now. So um, I know for me personally, since training with you and upping my intensity with my martial arts going crazy right now with my, the intensity of what's going on, um, I, I'm feeling amazing. I'm feeling stronger. My legs are stronger, all of that stuff. Um, so is it a psychological thing with the testosterone or is it really working? Does it, it will like, what sort of exercises do men need to do to increase? Is it strength? Is it high intensity? If it is high intensity, what does that look like? Yeah. yeah. So resistance training has the most direct impact on impact on testosterone levels. Um, if you're completely inactive, then doing anything will increase your testosterone levels. Once you develop sort of like a base level of, you know, fitness day to day, we're talking like the ability to not get puffed walking around and stuff like that. Your testosterone levels probably won't go up much more. 
But um, weightlifting, yeah, and resistance training has a measured effect upon increasing testosterone when you do it. And doing it regularly keeps testosterone elevated above where it would be otherwise. So yeah, it, it, it has a measurable effect on it. It's one of the most measurable effects that we can have on testosterone is lifting. So yeah. what, is, what is resistance exercise? Is that like getting a resistance band and putting it on my leg and pulling it against it? Is that resistance exercise or you, is it something else? It could be lifting weights. It could be body weight exercises like push-ups and sit-ups and things like that. You know, it's, it's something that gets challenging after about, oh, you know, at the most about 50 repetitions. So if you can do 50 repetitions or less of something and you can't do more than that because it's too hard and your muscles are burning, then that would be probably classified as resistance training. Yeah. Yeah. And things like, you know, short distance swimming can also be counted as that. Uh, it doesn't have to be just lifting weights. It could be sprinting, you know, in the form of sprinting on a bike or just sprinting as a run. Something like that would definitely be covered under that ribbon as well. I've never heard it explained like that before. I like that. And so, the, the, you know, the new HIT work, oh, everyone's talking about HIT, HIIT, High Intensity mm-hmm. Interval Training. Um, mm-hmm. How does that look in this, what we're talking about now? Yeah, it, it's good until it's not. So high intensity interval training is great, but it's easy to overdo it. Um, there's a certain amount of that you will respond really well to, and it's usually less than people think. But it depends on the context of your high intens- intensity training. If I'm doing high intensity intervals and I'm lifting heavy weights during those intervals, it has a different effect than if I was just sprinting on a bike or if I was just going for a jog. So if you're using heavier resistance-based exercises in that context, it's awesome. If you're using, you know, running and things that would be more traditionally like cardio in that context, then testosterone level-wise, it's probably not going to have the same effect. There's got to be that overcoming of heavy weight in some regard or outputting of max power that's really going to drive those levels up. It usually happens now, more okay. the heavier the resistance. Now, let's, you know, fellas, we're going we're gonna to hit a subject here, and I'm hoping you're getting this. We're talking testosterone, which impacts the way your mood is, your mental alertness. It impacts the way you're feeling, your sex drive. Uh, all of those areas is impacted by your testosterone, uh, your strength, all of those areas. Um, now, but let's talk about the benefits of a man getting well or benefits of a man losing the beer belly. Mm. Um, you know, I think what's happening is what, one of the things I find so saddening, saddening is men want women to look like the, the lingerie model, right? But they don't realize that they should look like, they, they, they can look like the Calvin Klein model. They want to look like the, um, Homer Simpson, but they want their woman to look like the lingerie model. It's kind of a, uh, we're hit, going to hit on a, on, a, on, a, on a touchy point here where I want men to move into the place of let's get real. Don't put non-real expectations on your partner, especially if you're not living up to your end of the bargain, right? So um, men looking after themselves, the added benefit is, the ones that we love are going to go pretty wow. Isn't that right? You know, you know, mm. the, the, you, we all like to look at a lady that looks great. Well, what about if the man became the one, the, the one that the lady looked like, looked at and go, wow, right back. You know what I mean? And so where, how much does diet play, the, the diet role play, in starting to look good, starting to lose that belly fat, starting to say, hey, you know what? I don't want my wife or my partner just to be the only one that looks great. I want to look great for me, and I also want to look great for my partner. What role does diet play? Diet's huge. You know, diet and diet and exercise are synergistic. You can't really go really well without both. It's hard to nail down which one, which one's more important. If you want to be healthier, maybe you'd err on the side of exercise being more important. If you wanted to look better, I would definitely err on the side of diet being the most important thing. And it's one of those things I was talking about earlier where the more you get into something, the more it teaches you discipline that crosses over to other areas. For me, being disciplined with my food affected my training so much that I had to do it. And it's not necessarily fun to say no to foods you want to eat, but it's a necessity for me at a certain level of competition that I have to 
And that's where I started learning real discipline is in controlling my food. And that's where it started crossing over to improving the other areas of my life. You know, I used improving my dietary habits as a vehicle to build my discipline and which I can then use on whatever I'd like to, to do better. Yeah, food is huge. Nice. And, and so what sort of food should they be looking at? Like uh, we're hearing so many different variances of reports, you know, high fat, high protein, low carb, low calorie, no sugar, lots of sugar, you know, um, what's your viewpoint on it as a strong man professional in the industry? I think what generally seems to work the best is the least exciting stuff. You know, to be honest, meeting somewhere in the middle has been shown to be the best in terms of a lot of things. Cause like, yeah, it's really nice to say I'm going to eat nothing but organic meats and fish and chicken and veggies. And that is great for the two weeks that you do it. But what about the rest <laughs> of your life? You know? Yeah. You- so like, what's, what's the, the best way to do it? Well, I would say the more real stuff you can have, the better. So we're talking about meats, we're talking about chicken, we're talking about fish, we're talking about fruits and veggies, we're talking about, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of rice and pasta and stuff like that. But with all these things, the more natural you can have in, se- in the sense of it's a whole food, that it's the only ingredient on the packet you get it in, that's the stuff you want. Um, the more like that you can be, the better. But you have to be real with yourself. You know, if you really, really like donuts and there's no way you can formulate a diet without donuts and you try and keep donuts away from yourself, what's going to happen is you won't eat donuts for two weeks. Then you'll go and you'll eat a whole donut shop. That person would be better off having half of a donut a day and then never having that binge. You know, you have to be smart about it. You need to generally the sensible stuff. It's like it's the meat and the veggies, that stuff. That's the base of your diet. That's the main thing you have. And then you add little bits of other stuff in from there. You know, I think it's not super complex and it's definitely not glorious. You know, it's not, you don't have to forego carbs. You don't have to forego fat. You don't have to eat heaps of either of those things. You can meet somewhere in the middle and be just fine. The biggest thing is you're not going too crazy in any one direction because it's those extremes that bring about, bring about the extremes. Not in a good way most of the time. I agree. Um, one of the things for me is that I don't, me, I don't personally believe I need to diet. I believe in cleansing. I believe in that we need to, you know, there is a period where you should cleanse your body out and do detoxification and get the right nutrients in the right products to help with that. Um, But once you get to a place that you're happy with your weight and you're happy with your size, we want to focus more on size than we, you know, your like the shirt size and the pants size versus weight because weight muscle weighs a lot more than fat Mm -hmm. um so you know it's the um get to the point you want to be and then just eat a diet and an ex and have an exercise program that allows you to be there yeah but don't put too much of the junk in as well i mean don't don't you know you shouldn't be you want to be figuring out how much chocolate and ice cream you're allowed to have um and not too much of them yeah, and you can delve into it really far. You know, you can give yourself allotments each day of how many grams of protein, carbs, and fats you want, and all that stuff. It's what I say to people is the further you want to dive into it, the more you'll get out of it. But there is a certain point where you have to sit back and be like, okay, I can't go to social events because I can't eat all these foods. And that is a bit ridiculous. Uh, I'm not going to be able to maintain that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go as far into it as you want. But at the end of the day, if the majority of your food is from extremely healthy sources, you're going to be extremely healthy. Yeah. Yeah, and like, and 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 for those people that are listening to this podcast, or you're a vegan, uh, or you're just, or a, you're, you mainly have a plant-based diet, then just understand, we're ta- even though we're talking meat, we're talking about protein, and it is difficult. And even though there's uh, like you and I had this conversation, Jack, about the vegetarian uh, bodybuilders, they get it, but they're also supplementing in other ways, uh, yeah. in, in a lot of respects. Um, but you know, so, but if you're not looking for competition levels, uh, mass big competition levels, uh, a good, um, pro, you know, a good vegetarian diet with good proteins, lots of vitamin B and all the nutrients you guys know you need to have fine. It's a, but it's, a, it's, it's looking at your diet and really, is it still really, uh, Jack, um, calories in versus calories burnt? I think at the end of the day, at the end of the day, yes, to an extent, 
you know, I wish it was easy to just say yes or no. Is it at the end of the day, calories in versus calories out? If all you're looking at is weight gain and weight loss, yes. But if you had only calories of chocolate, you would be low in vitamins and minerals and then you would be unhealthy. You might be skinny or you might not be skinny. You might be too big because you're eating too much, but you still wouldn't be healthy because you'd have other deficiencies. Then that's why the real food approach works because you just tend to cover all of your micronutrient, vitamin and mineral needs that way. And you don't have to worry about that stuff. But yeah, if you want to lose weight, mm. but get what you're currently eating and just have a little bit less and you'll probably lose weight. If you want to gain muscle, get what you're currently eating and you could eat a little bit more and it probably will happen. You know, it, it, the problem is, is people don't measure what they're eating. So they don't know what a little bit less is and they don't know what a little bit more is. They're just guessing. And when you're guessing, you don't really control the outcome. You have to know the contributing factors to control the outcome. So if you want to eat a little bit less, first find out exactly what you are even eating now. And then you can know how to take some away from that rather than just shooting in the dark. That's the number one mistake I see people make. You know, they don't know what they're currently doing, so they don't know where to go from there. And they jump into some diet that's completely different and you still have no reference point. So you, you need a reference point. You need yeah. to know where you're at. Yeah. So, you know, Jack, thank you so much for today, guys. Today, you've learned a lot. Men, you've learned a lot. Uh, you learn a lot that, okay, it's important for you to get into the weights. It's important for you to get into resistance-based training, if, especially if you want to continue to build your muscle mass, your bone density, your testosterone levels, and live a longer life. That's basically what we're talking about. Not just the, you see, uh, Al, one of the, the, the podcasts I just recorded, he had a great quote, and it was that, um, we, I think it was Abraham Lincoln said that most men die at 25. They just get buried at 75. Um, yeah. And so we get to choose, you know, what do we want the highlight of our life to be? What do, we, what do you want your life to look like? Uh, exercise is a major part of it. You all men, you all should know my feelings about exercise. I love it. I believe in supplementation. I take uh, very, very powerful, important nutritional supplements that have changed my life. Um, or might be sharing them on this podcast. Um, and, you know, I believe that the better you look after yourself, the better the results your life will have. You'll look better. Your skin will look better. You'll look younger. Um, I've got these scales, Jack. I should lend them to you. Um, mm. I, I spent a fortune on them for my, um, my dojang. And uh, the students hop on. And I know you've heard that, 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 that these are within 5% range of getting a body scan and it tells them their muscle density, their muscle mass, muscle quality, fat, you know, it tells visceral fat, tells them everything and their metabolic age. Kind of funny. Um, and so, man, if you want to be better, perform better, you want to be a better husband, a better, better, a better lover, a better father, a better friend, a better employee, a better business owner, you must look after your health. It's just part of it. You'd have to agree with that, Jack, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, I mean, tell me what part of your life wouldn't feel better with more energy. Yeah, there you go. There's the answer right there. So, guys, my name's James Tanner from Men Real Life. Thanks for listening in today. Uh, if you have, make sure you click the subscribe uh, button before you go to, to our channel so that the next podcast is automatically in your feed. And if you're not part of our Men Real Life Facebook community, our group where we put our live videos, live interviews, we talk about men's stuff. There are no ladies in this group, not one. Uh, it's just men talking about men's stuff. If you're not part of that, come to our Men Real Life Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash men real life all one word and we'll add you to that group just send us a message say group uh or and if you want to keep getting our podcast links type in the word podcast so group in one message and podcast in another and we'll get you added jack it's been a privilege to have you on this today with us mate be well um i know we're going to get you back on again share with some more of your wisdom and maybe we can talk a little bit more about uh, how a man can start strong man and yeah. uh, maybe they can connect with you on Instagram as well and see some yeah. of your videos. Fellas, just to let you know, uh, when I look at Jack's videos and what he lifts and what he's doing, he was doing push-ups between two benches with weights around his uh, waist 
uh, yesterday, I think it was, uh, you kind of feel like you need to do more. Just letting you know, fellas. So, uh, Jack, thank you again, mate. Be well and uh, God bless everyone.